We've been learning about Joseph. He uh, was um, accused of doing something he didn't do. And he got thrown in jail. And which isn't fair at all, especially since God had already told Joseph that uh, he was going to uh, rule, be a ruler, basically. And you can't be a very good ruler if you're in prison. That doesn't work out that way. So after he was thrown in prison, sometime later, uh, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended, offended him. They did something wrong. Burnt, burnt his cookies or, or something. Uh, the baker and the butler. And Pharaoh was angry with his officers. And he uh, put them in custody of the house of the captain of the guard uh, in the prison where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard put them in Joseph's charge. And he served them. And they continued in custody for some time. God will make a promise, and when there are promises, uh, he keeps them. I mean, it's not always exactly when we want them, because God knows the best timing for everything. So, we're all supposed to be like God, right? We want to be uh, like he does. We want to have his love and his faithfulness and his, his goodness and his mercy and love and all this kind of stuff. And so we can all uh, have have those attributes in our life. So if I said, I have some cookies, and I want to give you these cookies. In fact, I don't even want to, I don't want to just give you these cookies. I promise I will give you these cookies. So now we can just stand here, and we can look at the cookies, and we can wait, and wait. Hmm. And wait. That's boring. I mean, this 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 isn't going to get us anywhere fast. I mean, because you are going to get them, but just standing around watching them, waiting for them, is going to be awful boring. So, what we need to do is we need to keep busy, and that's what Joseph was doing. He was put in prison. He was said he was going to be uh, he was going to rule and be a ruler, but he wasn't showing up. He wasn't acting, that wasn't what was happening for him, them, him. But instead of just sitting around and going, oh, now I've got to be here. I'm in prison here. I was promised, uh, this is no good. What a bummer. Uh. So instead of that, what Joseph was doing was he was um, taking some of God's attributes and showing them in prison. You can sit around and wait for something, or you can be busy in doing something. The, the baker and the butler had both had dreams. Then they must have been pretty, they were pretty disturbing, and because they didn't know what they, what they meant. And uh, so uh, Joseph, who was taking care of them, came to them in the morning and saw that they were upset. And he said to them, uh, we have dreamed dreams and there's no one to interpret them. Joseph said to them, do not, uh, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me your dreams. And the chief butler told a dream to Joseph and said to him, I had a dream. Uh, I saw a vine before me and the vine had were three branches. And then it was, and it was as they budded and blossomed and they burst forth and they produced grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and I pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup to Pharaoh. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. And you will again put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, as when you were his butler. Uh, but think of me, when it shall be well with you, and show kindness, I beg you to me. Show, mention me to Pharaoh to get me out of this house. And truly, I was carried away from the land of the Hebrews by an unlawful force, and here too I have done nothing to which they should put me into this dungeon. And when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. And behold, I had three cake baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket there were some all kinds of baked food for Pharaoh. Okay. And the birds of the prey were eating out of the basket on my head. And Joseph answered him, <clears throat> this is the interpretation of that. The three baskets are three days. 
Within th three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and you will be hung on a tree uh, and the birds of the air will eat your flesh. That's not a good interpretation. That means he's going to be Dead. Going to be dead in three days. And on the third day, uh, there was Pharaoh's birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Uh, he made a feast for his servants, and he lifted up the heads of his chief butler and chief baker by inviting them along with his other servants. And he restored the chief butler to his butlership, and the butler put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But Pharaoh hanged the chief baker, and Joseph had interpret, interpreted it. But the chief butler gave no thought to Joseph, but forgot all about him. After two full years, Pharaoh dreamed to have a dream. He's having a dream. Out of the river comes three uh, fat and sassy cows eating the grass and looking all nice there. And behold, seven other cows came up out of the river. Uh, who were ill-favored and gaunt and ugly and stood by the fat cows on the bank of the river. And all the ill-favored, gaunt, and ugly cows ate the seven well-favored cows. And then Pharaoh woke, and then he slept, and he dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of grain came out of one stalk, plump and good. And behold, after them, seven ears of grain, thin and blighted by the east wind, and the seven thin ears of grain devoured the seven plump ears. And, and Pharaoh woke, and behold, it was a dream. So when the morning came, uh, his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called to all the magicians and all the wise men in Egypt. Amen. So Pharaoh called all of his wise men, and none of them could uh, answer, answer the dream. But then the butler, who had been in prison with with, who had gotten out of prison because of Joseph, remembered him, finally, two years. Uh, then the chief uh, butler said to Pharaoh, I remember my faults today. When Pharaoh was angry and with his servant, he put me in custody and I had a dream. This young man interpreted my dream. Perhaps he can do the same for Pharaoh. So Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. But Joseph first shaved he uh, changed his clothes and made himself presentable to Pharaoh's presence. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is no one who can interpret. And so he tells Joseph, oh, he, asked, um, he, asked, he asked Joseph, you interpreted those dreams, can you interpret this dream? And uh, Joseph said, all dreams uh, come from God, all things are, are known by God. And so he said, you're going to have a family. You're going to have seven great years, and then you're going to have seven years that are so bad, you're going to forget the good years. Okay? No, not yet. So, um, so, so, Joseph says, what you need to do, you need to uh, build build barns and save up for the lean years because you're you're going to need it. Basically, what he did. He went to all the fortified cities that had been built granaries, and they put put back one fifth of all the produce that uh, the land produced in those seven years. And uh, when those seven years were up, seven years of famine came, and the only place anybody could get any food was in Egypt because they had stored it up. So you have all the people from all the all the round all around the region came to them to buy, right buy, buy the grain because, because they're the only ones that, that had it. And uh, he actually, Joseph had two sons. Joseph uh, called his firstborn uh, Manasseh, which means making to forget because uh, all this goodness and all the, well, his wife and now he had a child and made him forget all the bad years that were behind him, all the years that uh, he been in prison and everything. So he named his his child Making to Forget. And his second child, he called Ephraim. And that means to be faithful, which is what God was. God had been faithful to him all these years. I mean, it took a while, but then that was what this is all about. 
And yeah. just think about it. He was so faithful to the point that while Joseph was in the prison, it was like God used that to pave the way for him to get to Pharaoh, to translate Pharaoh's dreams. So through all of that, he was so faithful that he was just preparing Joseph. There was a reason why he was there. So there's always a reason for where you are in life. Even when it seems like it sucks, there's always a reason. He's always going to be preparing you. Very good. I mean, because, uh, again, there's a verse in the Bible, I know the plans I have for your life, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And uh, so, again, Joseph, what was Joseph's attitude? He had a, he had a great attitude, right? He had, he had the worst possible place you could be in prison. But his attitude was positive. And the people, I mean, the, the jailer saw how positive he was and put him in charge because he, know, he knew he could be trusted. And that might have even made it a little bit easier on him, uh, his, his situation. And so being faithful, being, being accepting God's faithfulness and doing the best you can where you are with what you have, basically. Uh, in Micah, uh, it's, uh, I wrote down Micah, didn't write down the verse. Um, it says, he is showing you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And so that's what he was doing. And he was, he was, the blessing hadn't arrived yet, but he was gathering it around him by his actions, by his, his attitudes. Mm -hmm.